Today I am in Crystal River, Florida, fishing out of the plantation on Crystal River, one of my very favorite places with one of my new favorite guys up here, Captain Dallas King. What's up, big dog? Fishing, we will go. It's gonna be a good day, Mike. Looking forward to it, always is. So the last time Dallas and I got together, it was, uh, it was a little warmer, summertime. A lot of snook, a lot of redfish had already kind of made their way out front. This time, we just now started to get a warm up. We're just starting to scratch the surface of spring. Uh, the trout bite up here has been really, really good. The redfish are starting to get pretty active. That water temp getting around that magical 70 degree mark. Um, anywhere from 68 to 72, 74, they get pretty frisky. And, uh, you know, it, it's been kind of a cold winter here. So these fish are hungry, they're active. And I am really, really looking forward to this adventure to see what Dallas has in store for us. Somebody tick me on that one. There he is, he came uh, back for it. Boy, oh boy. Ooh, they fight good when they're down deep, they boy. They do. They feel good on that light tackle. No doubt about it. Look at that head shake. Not a bad one. Not a bad one at all. There you go. One of the tricks to fishing the Contender 26 Bay up in Crystal River or Citrus County in general is there's just massive miles and miles, massive amounts of grass flats that on low tide can be a little bit treacherous. So the good news is the trout bite's been really pretty good in four to eight foot of water. So we thought we'd start the morning out with some trout action and let that water in the back country come up a little bit so we can get to those redfish uh, a little bit later. And uh, you know, again, morning run on the trout, very cold water tolerant, very active on artificial baits this time of year. So, you know, that was that was kind of the, the game plan for the day. Let's start with the trout, let the water come up, then we can attack the redfish later. Do you run into a time of the year deal where a lot of these fish are, you know, 13 to 16 inches, or, and then all of a sudden at a certain time of the year, more of the fish are 18 to 20? I or would definitely say it? that that happens. Okay. I would definitely say that happens. Winter time, you know, you, you, oh, there's another one. You seem to get them in these schools and you'll catch 10, you know, 13 to, to 15 inches and then boom, you'll catch 20 inches. Okay. You know, yeah. it's just kind of strange. This ain't, this one ain't bad either. That one's not Looks bad. Looks like a good one. Oh, see you later. Perfect good, release Perfect right release. That's what I've been trying to tell my customers too. We're not out here grocery shopping. We're here fishing, enjoying it. Don't have to take everything home, you know. I like to take fish home, but I like to take fish home that I'm gonna eat today. That especially not, trout. There's not, another one. Well, you're right. Trout don't freeze well anyway. Limit your catch, don't catch your limit. Do I have permission to steal that slogan right there? Yeah, of course. It wasn't mine to begin with. Woo, that's a healthy one. That one will do. Look at him. We've been talking about him having shoulders and this one's long and skinny. Nice slop fish right there. Something that kind of gets lost sometime in, in some of these episodes. These captains, some of them, and, and Dallas is a perfect example. You know, he gets he gets a little worked up. He gets a little uh, he gets a little anxiety going over the cameras being on the boat, you know, and um, I understand it. You know, being a fishing guide for 23 years here in Florida, you know, you can be on them one day, they got tails, the next day they're gone. So trying to get him just to calm down and relax. He's such a great angler and he's got so much passion for what he does. Uh, and he always wants to do a good job for all of his customers uh, and for me when him and I are fishing together. So, you know, it, once we can get a few fish under our belt, and he kind of starts to relax a little bit and then his personality comes out, makes for a really, really fun day. Crikey, mate. Right here in Crystal River, Florida. 
stalking down the wild Mike Anderson. Here we find him in his contender baby. It's a big boat, mate. Just waiting on a bite. I can't wait to see him in action, mate. Till then, we'll see you later. You playing him soft or is that a yeah, real one? I don't know. I that, think it's That's a nice trout, that's Mike. That's a nice trout. Not a that's nice a one real, there, baby. Really nice fish. Stop. He doesn't know how close to tacos he is, huh? That's right. <laughs> that's a beauty. Yeah, that tide's starting to crank now too, so. Oh! He hit I me on the ball. I heard it. I heard it. Sometimes, Mike, we just gotta find him and you know we had that little lull, but we made a move and I tell you. Looks like this good is some fish. fun fishing right here. That looks like good fish right there. Just bumping these little johns along, man. Cannot beat it. What no, a I, fun day. I absolutely love it. That's not a bad one either. No, I'll that take boy. that. That's not bad at all, my friend. Come on, buddy. See you later, alligator. Oh boy. Nice. Hey, now we're fishing, bud. You know, it was interesting. You could kind of, you could kind of feel the pressure kind of come off of Dallas just a little bit once the trout cooperated in the morning, and you could kind of see he was getting happier by the minute because redfish backcountry stuff is really kind of his groove, and I could see he was he was getting happy once we noticed that water was coming up and it was time to get in the back and catch those redfish. So what's the plan here, Cap? Well, we finally got enough water to get down here. It's crystal clear, it's uh, it's beautiful, so we're gonna do some sight fishing. Look at that, <laughs> that's the plan, buddy. Ooh. That's the plan, you got him? Yeah, I got him. Nice. Well, that worked out. Yeah, it did. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the plan there, Mike. While you were, while you were telling fish. me about the plan, the plan came to fruition. That's right. Nice little Crystal River Red right there. Switch to the mud minnow, baby. That's it. The muddy. Little red dog. You got a little rat coming? Yeah, a little red dog. All right. So yeah, we're gonna get in these uh, points where the water's ripping, get some bait out there and, and find them. Eyeball them up once we see them. We'll hit them. Boy, that's a pretty fish, bud. They're so nice, dude. They're just so sweet. Look at the blue tail on that girl right there. Yeah, you think they've been eating some crusties? Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful redfish, buddy. Oh boy, cap. Look at that, look at that. I happen to know there's some bigger ones that live over there nice too. Trout. Yeah, but that's a good starter. I'll take that. Straight blue tail. Look at that. Beautiful. The colors oh, are fatty amazing. too. Well, what do you say we get another one? I'm in. Love it. Nice work, Dallas. You know, getting the opportunity to slide into the back of the vast backcountry here is is really to me something that never gets old. There's so much estuary here that's so beautiful and so well maintained because the nature coast and they call it that for a reason and you really get a feel for that when you do something like we did today where you're out kind of deep wide open area not a lot of islands not a lot of structure and then being able to slide back into the back country where all this structure is where the snook and the redfish really populate really live the mullet concentrate on the islands the water is so clean here because of the beautiful grass it's just a great great experience if you love to fish this is a must fish destination. Oh boy. Decent fish. Yeah. What a hit you. A lot of just shoulder. A lot of shoulder. Oh, boy. oh nice fish, Mike. Oh boy. You know, this one didn't really tag it like those other it's ones have. It's a good have. fish. No, but we're getting closer to the end of that tide. As that tide starts to slow down, they, 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 that little bit of flare to them just settles down just a little bit. Boy, that is another good fish. Another quality slot fish right yep. there, Mike. Yes, it is. That a boy. Oh, look at that head shake. Get up here. Come on. Tell me what you got. You got a mud minute hanging out of his mouth. That's what he's got. <laughs> the trick minnow. Nice. Let me... All you. Nice. Oh boy. Nice. Woo! Chunker. That's a pretty fish. Yeah, not super long, but super thick. 
There's Boy, he this, wanted that mud minnow too, boy. <laughs> all this, all this grass. I think all this estuary being so healthy lends itself because there's so much bait here. The fish you catch are just healthier and stronger than you catch in a lot of other places. I agree, man. It's really I agree. Impressive. Beautiful fish. Really a great fishery here. Big red fish, small red fish, slot fish. Absolutely amazing. This week's Real Animals Tip of the Week, I want to talk to you about my good friends at Ingle Coolers. You know, being a full-time fishing guide here in Florida, being an avid outdoorsman, a hunter, being able to keep ice is paramount in everything I do every day. Again, whether I'm in the woods or I'm on the water in August here in Florida when it's 112 degrees out, and nobody keeps ice and things in my cooler colder than my good friends at Ingle Coolers. Not only that, their thought process, their design process in everything they do is second to none. They're the original roto-molded cooler. They're the best and the last cooler you'll ever need. Whether you need a dry box cooler like this, they make these in a live bait cooler as well. Whether you're looking for cooler bags, backpacks, all that stuff is at Ingle Coolers. The big roto-molded coolers are second to none. Kind of a snag-free zone here if you're throwing a cast net like I do every day. All the little things you need to think about when you're making a great cooler, they've done it at Ingle Coolers. Go to inglecoolers.com, find out for yourself why this is a no-brainer for the Real Animals Fishing Team. There's a bunch of different sizes in there. How do you, how do you know which mud minnow jumps out at you? How do you know which well, one? Well, I mean, if we were snook or grouper fishing, that'd be your guy, just nice and big, lively, but we got some redfish in here, and that just kind, kind of a medium size. Just kind of a nice medium size, like that guy would big go. Enough, big enough you can throw it. Exactly, gotcha. exactly. Using no weight, so you want to be able to, to get it out there. And these guys here are healthy. They are healthy. And they do not quit, boy. It's a hardy bait. The mud minnow works for you, not against you. Every area you fish has that live bait that really, really works well. Certain times of the year, almost all over the west coast of Florida, it's shrimp. But when that water temp starts to climb, those fish get aggressive and they start chasing, you know, some areas it's pinfish uh, for the Tampa Bay region where I fish every day, it's, it's pilchards and threadfin herring. Here in Crystal River, sneaky little bait fish they use here, the mud minnow, super hardy, uh, seem to be pretty plentiful. The bait and tackle stores almost all have them. They do a great job staying alive in the live well. Um, they stay alive on the hook pretty well as well. And it sure seems like a bait that big snook, big redfish, neither one of them can turn it down. It's a great go-to live bait for this part of the state. So literally, if you aim just left of the power plant, and there's two good ones laid up right under those mullet. Yep. Oh my God, yes. That's still great. You should hit them right on their right eyeball. Eat my worm! Let me love you. <laughs> exactly. They're gonna be in here. It's gonna work. Uh oh. What you got, kids? Pretty nice red. Not. Oh boy. There you go. Oh boy. Had to get right up in those mullet, man. Not too shabby. Pretty fish. Oh boy. Ooh. This water temp's still being a little cooler, boy. They are feisty, right? Feisty. That's a nice slot fish there. That's a good fish, yeah. Oh, a little double spotter. Cutie. A little pumpkin. D E A beautiful. Oh boy. Take that. All day. All day, baby. You just had to set up a little different and get that one going, man. Love when they get all those different spots going. Such a beautiful fish. Nice Crystal River Red. Why fish, you coming, baby? 
Nice flat tail. Yep. Blue. Beautiful. Big tail. This fish is going to get big, too. Go back. Make babies. Get big. Make babies. Swim free, baby. Swim free. Oh, boy. Good oh, boy. Stuff, Mike. I like it. All right. The plantation on Crystal River is a beautiful 50-year-old, 232-acre old Florida-style resort, offering comfortable accommodations and a full-service spa. They call this the Nature Coast for good reason. Fishing is spectacular, from snook, trout, and reds to big grouper and snapper. On-site activities range from golf to boating, fishing, and swimming with the manatees in the natural springs of Kings Bay. The Real Animals Fishing Show can't recommend a better place to stay on the nature coast than the plantation on Crystal River. In this week's Real Animals Tackle Box, my good friend Captain Dallas King and I are using our simple and favorite inshore rig. This is the seven foot two inch Bull Bay Real Animals Signature Series rod. I absolutely love this thing. This is our 15 pound class rods. It's a medium, moderate, fast tip, which for me is just about perfect for throwing artificials this time of year. We got a Penn Battle DX2500, this is the DX3. Absolutely a phenomenal reel. I love the drag on this thing, super light balances out this gear really, really well. If you're throwing artificials all day, your arm doesn't get tired. It's just a great weight assembly to use this time of year. We've got 10 pound vicious braided line. We've got 20 pound vicious fluorocarbon leader. The mirror lure Little John today, watermelon red glitter. We were really doing well in four to eight foot of water, quarter ounce jig head so that jig can kind of get you down there to the bottom to that strike zone. This was the perfect setup for most of what we did today. All we did when we changed gears and went to the live bait, which we were using some mud minnows, we went to a two-aught Nautilus light circle hook, rigging through, right through the bottom chin and out through the top of the mud minnow, and that absolutely worked on a redfish today. This is all the gear you need to do exactly what Dallas and I did today. Get yourself hooked up, loaded up, get out there and catch some fish. go hang them baby hang them nice mike oh that's a healthy one i'm gonna say that's a little better fish that's a good fish that's a little better fish i think that's a little better fish right there that's a bigger dog that's what we came for baby a little bigger dog it's not a monster but it's bigger than what we called before we're going in the right direction we're heading up baby that is so cool, dude. God, my favorite thing about redfish is you get out here and you can see the whole fight. That crystal you know, clear water. You offshore fishing's cool, all that stuff's great, but here, as soon as that fish feels that hook, you see that big swirl. Oh, he's a little bigger than I that's would a nice red for, yeah. yeah. That's a nice redfish, nice redfish. I like when they just dog you like this, too. They don't necessarily rip drag like crazy, but just give you that shoulder. Dig. Yeah. They dig, redfish just dig. Man, that is a beautiful fish. Yeah, that's a like. really nice redfish right there. Out of boy. That's why you come right here, the Nature Coast. That's it, baby. That's it. Woo, thank you, Lord, for another nice fish. This is great. Doesn't great, get any great, better. Great. Doesn't get any better, my friend. Look at that head too, boy. Yeah, that is a big old one. nugget. You got a big old nugget on you like <laughs> Captain Mike. You got a big old nugget. Ready yet, baby? You ready? They are feisty. Oh, That's dude. a nice redfish right there, kid. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Come see me, baby. Come up, baby. There she is, Mike. Ooh, look came, at the belly that's what we on came that. for right there, dog. That's it, baby. That's Give nice, me some. Boy. Circle hook did its job right where it's supposed to go. I do love Ooh. that about the circle hook. Here you look go. Look at that fish there. 
Why do you have the belly on that thing? Look at those shoulders. Even that big old nugget. <laughs> you got a nugget, kid. You got a nugget, oh. kid. Beautiful fish, yeah, man. Nice. Nicely done. That is gorgeous. That's a good, good piece of guiding right there, my friend. Well done. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. My brother. That was great, man. Absolutely a pleasure to come see you again here at Crystal River, dude. You do uh, magical things, my friend. I appreciate it, man. That's Thank you for coming fishing. back. Great Thank day you for fishing, coming dude. back. That was fun, man. I love this place. It's so beautiful to boot. I mean, you have a great fishery, but man, if you don't take a couple minutes and take in the actual beauty of the nature coast, you are missing out. These islands are incredible. The they water are. clarity, it's just magical, buddy. Healthy down here, man, and I, I hope it stays that way. I hope it stays that way, Mike. I, I hope so too. I hope for you it does. I hope for me it does. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Thank you. Thank you. I say it all the time and, and I just won't stop saying it. You know, there's so many great guides here. Dallas has done a great job uh, at becoming one of the better guides here in the Crystal River area of Florida. Um, again, his personality, his passion for it is really, really special. And this area is special. The plantation on Crystal River great accommodations at a beautiful old Florida resort. And you mix that with this estuary, opportunities to do offshore, inshore, near shore things. It's just a magical place. And again, like I said before, I'll be back.